in time live. Uh, where's Commander Curry? I hear voices. Is that you? Yes, it is. Oh, oh, hi. I don't know where you are, but I can hear you. Hey, how you doing there? This is Commander Kurt. I'm in, coming to you through the airways, and uh, we have a very special guest today, Ron Harvey. Hey, Ron, how you doing? I'm doing grand. How are you doing? I'm doing Wherever great. So, uh, uh, tell us about yourself, Ron. About myself? Well, I am a what you would call a professional clown, but I also do puppet shows. You do? I do puppet shows. Tell us about it. Okay, well, I, I'm, I have a series of different shows that are already put together that we've performed in and around Washington State. And um, they range from very short stories and all the way up to 45 minutes long. Uh, most of my puppets are soft animal type puppets. And um, the stories are something I've created and based on uh, different stories that I have read in the past as I was growing up. But most of them are just uh, stories that I've created. And how did you get started? Oh, well, uh, I was a librarian for five years. And I used to like telling the stories to children by holding up a puppet and animating the puppet. And they really liked it. So I thought, oh, I'll continue doing this. So I started writing some stories and doing some little puppet shows for friends and, and at little birthday parties and so on. And then I met with a professional clown. And since my father was a clown at, on parades at the Shriners, I guess it was something inside of me was moving me in that direction. So I combined clowns with puppet shows. And that's how I got started. Oh, how very neat. So uh, why don't you go ahead and show us some of those puppets, if you would. Oh, sure, I, yes, uh, by all means. What I'd like to do, if you don't mind, wherever you are, uh, is... Over here, over oh, there, okay. everywhere. All right. Well, I'd like to talk about some of the shows that I've done and introduce you some of the characters that are in that show. Please do. Okay. The first one I'd like to talk about is a puppet show called Willie B. Wizard. And it's a great birthday party puppet show. And it talks about a little bear, Willie, who wants to become a wizard, a magical wizard, so that he can help his friends whenever they're in trouble. And he gets an invitation to the king's birthday party. And along the way, he meets different entities who are in trouble. And so, along the way, he helps them. And one of these characters that he meets is called Cornelius. Cornelius Crow. Cornelius. Ah, 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 ah. Caution, caution, calamity. Ah, 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 catastrophe. What's wrong? Ah, it's my nest. It's always falling down. Why is that? Cause the wind, ah, cause the wind keeps blowing it down. Ah! Oh, I see. Well, perhaps you should find Willie. He'll help you. Yes, I'll find Willie. Where is he? Ah, 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 ah. Well, that was Cornelius. And um, Willie does help him out and solves his dilemma. Another show that we've just recently performed in the library um, for the Timberland Library, as a matter of fact, is an adaptation to William Shakespeare's Midsummer Night's Dream. What I did is I condensed it and made it into ordinary language so children could enjoy some of Shakespeare's work. And um, it's a story basically about love. As uh, William Shakespeare wanted to do, show the different aspects of love. And so I thought this would be fun to do a play on, on, on it and uh, introduce also some fantastic characters that are like fairies and hobgoblins that are in that play. One of the characters, and uh, what the play is based upon, is a duke. And this is the duke. And his scene is he's out hunting on his wedding day. Mm. Uh, he's out hunting with his friend. Yes, 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 indeed. Um, it does please me, my dear friend, uh, to see that the conflict between you and your daughter Hermia is resolved. <laughs> uh, surely you could see that the young Demetrius had eyes only for the fair-haired Helena and, <laughs> and not for your daughter. <laughs> uh, and I am also quite delighted that you've agreed to have a triple wedding this eve. <laughs> now. Let us be off to the palace. Ha <laughs> ha! Yes, let us go. And that was the Duke. 
Another show that we've done is called A Quest for Spring. A Quest for Spring is the story of a young girl who dreams of finding spring because she's a musician and she writes stories based on what she sees in nature. Um, unfortunately, her story that she started, or her song that she started to write about spring didn't get quite finished before summer came and spring disappeared. So her whole quest is to try to find out where did spring go? One of the characters that she meets up with and befriends is a caterpillar named Patapat. And Patapat sort of leads her in a direction to find spring. Spring? Spring? <laughs> yes, 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 spring! Oh, 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 how I long, long to spring from branch to branch instead of crawling all the time on my belly. <laughs> oh, no, wait, better yet, fly. Yes, 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 fly like the birds in the sky. Oh, what grand adventures I would have. <laughs> oh, my beady little eye, I spotted something green to munch on. <laughs> okay, bye, Patapat. <laughs> well, Patapat goes along with her on his adventures. And um, she also befriends a kind wizard and some bears who live in a cave. And she finally finds spring, her dream come true. She never gave up dreaming the dream of spring, and it came true. The, um, the next story I have is called Midas. It's an adaptation of a very old story. And Midas, uh, this modern version, is a very wealthy man, but a very wealthy, greedy man. Actually, he's not a man at all. He's a mouse. And in this story, he finds out that Desiring and having great wealth, such as gold, or as he received the golden touch by a magical being, was not really what would bring him happiness. And in, here's a short scene from his play. Oh, gold, gold. Huh? You're losing your glasses, McTavish. I thank you very much. <sighs> gold. All I wanted to have was a golden touch. But what good is it? <laughs> oh, you're going to have to. Yeah, how about we remove your glasses for you? I uh, thank you very much, lad. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, well, what good is it, hi? Look, I can't eat it. And I'm so hungry. Everything I touch turns to gold. Hmm. <sighs> I'm so miserable. Oh. If I could only get me hands on that fella that said, put your money where your mouth is. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. <laughs> uh, Lewis? Lewis? Uh, I've got a wee job for you to do, Lewis. The, the, uh, the name is Louis, boss. Well, that was Midas McTavish from Midas. He found out quick enough that having a touch, and gold, a touch of gold really didn't bring happiness to him at all. Another story we have is a Christmas story, and it's called Apple Pie Tree. Now, the Apple Pie Tree is a magical story that takes place in a little village. The hero of our story named Chip is a little beaver who lives in the village. And his, he and his friends are bored because every day, day in, day out, the people of the village do the same thing. They get up at the same time, they go to work at the same time, they eat at the same time, they go home at the same time, they go to sleep at the same time, day in, day out. And he is just bored and along with his friends. So one Christmas Eve, he's sleeping in his bed and he sees a bright star in the sky and he makes a wish. And he wishes that something will happen that will change the village and make it more exciting. The next day, he discovers, along with his friends, an apple pie tree growing just out the village, outside the village gates. Well, the mayor of the village and all the villagers were so upset because something has disturbed their daily routine. Why, they even hired a scientist to try to discover what and where did this tree come from. 
the scientist was a bit of a kook. Um, as you'll see in this little excerpt from the play. <laughs> oh, yes, I, I made a grand discovery today. <laughs> oh, oh, you won't believe this, uh, but I was observing flakes. <laughs> uh, snowflakes. Uh, you see, I observed the snowflakes as they came tumbling down, dancing on the slightest breeze. <laughs> they were such happy fellows until one tries to capture them. <laughs> then they turn themselves invisible, leaving only a teardrop behind. <laughs> I think I'll win a scientific award for that discovery. <laughs> yes, I think you will. Thank you very much, Professor. <sighs> I told you he was a little bit off. A little bit off? <laughs> oh, you're still with us. <laughs> yes, I am. No, those, 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 those are some great characters there. And um, so what? You said you got started doing that. What else do you do, Rod? Well, I do some clowning. And we do some birthday parties and uh, festivities, festivals, and uh, whatever, whatever occasion someone might want a clown. <laughs> Big Billy Button, huh? What's that all about? Big Button Belly. That's my clown. I have a picture. Would you like to see it? Uh, yes, please. Actually, it's a composite picture of some of the clowns that I work with and myself. I don't know if the camera can pick it up or not. Or Here we go. That's me right here and down here. As you can see, I'm wearing the same yeah, jacket. That's, that's you. That looks pretty cool. That, that, is that uh, Big Button Belly there? That's Big Button Belly. Excellent. Okay, that's my clown. Show us some more there. Okay. Um, I have another Christmas show called The Son of Santa Claus. It's about a little boy who was adopted by Santa and Mrs. Santa. And this story is about how important friendship is over gifts. And in this story, Son of Santa Claus is played by me. And the Son of Santa Claus is supposed to be sleeping in bed, but he, he doesn't like sleeping, when, especially when his mom and pop are outside. And they're out checking all the, all the gifts and everything for the great sleigh ride. And he sort of gets up, but there's a, a Christmas fairy that watches him and sees him sneaking around the house and decides, well, let's... Um, Let's see what this little scallywag is up to. And she watches him and observes him. And you know what he does? He decides to look into Santa's bag to see what Santa, his pops, has given him for Christmas. The, two, the Christmas fairy is very upset about this, but she lets him go ahead. And he discovers that his present was the smallest little present in the whole bag. He got really upset. And what he did is he took off the name tag off the present and put it on the whole bag and said, I'm the only son of Santa Claus. I deserve to have all the gifts. Then he hears somebody sneeze. And he takes off back to his room, to his bed. And the Christmas fairy, Hollyhock, that's her name, decides to make him a special present. And so she does some magic. But unfortunately, her wand disappeared. And she had to get a new wand, and she wasn't quite sure how it worked. But she said some magic trick, some magic words, and then all of a sudden, there appeared the perfect gift for Jingle to teach him a good lesson. Now, this is the scene, one of the scenes where Jingle makes friends with the gift and decides that he wants to play with this, this new friend of his. And this is the perfect gift. Oh, Jingle, oh, I, I, I can't go outside with you and play in the snow and make snowmen and snow angels. I'm only made of cardboard and paper. Oh, I'd fall all apart. Oh, mm. I know. How about we dance? Of course, Jingle says, well, yeah, but what kind of music would you like to dance to? And the gift just turns around and said, Why, there's only one type of dance that us Christmas gifts like to dance to, and that's Christmas rap. <laughs>
Well, off they went, dancing and dancing and dancing. Finally, anyhow, Jingle did realize when he had to make a choice between the gifts and a friend, what he would decide to do, he chose a friend. And so it ended at uh, a very happy ending with him choosing his friend, the gift. The other story we have is called A Dragon's Tale. That's a very popular one, especially with the guys. Guys like dragons. Some girls like dragons too, but I, have a, I happen to bring the dragon from that story. It, it's another story of love and, and how love can be a um, very powerful mover. And, and young Benjamin, who loves this young lady, but his, for her father says, he's got to bring back a dragon's tail in order to marry her. He says, I could do this, even though he's a bit of a coward. Is he found his courage for his love for Selina. And off he went to get a dragon's tail. When he finally, after a series of adventures, got to the dragon's lair, he was met by the dragon's wife, who, after a while, decided that she would help him. She made a big supper for the dragon, and when he was fast asleep, she started to ask him the questions because he was a very cranky dragon. And most, almost everyone that went up to see him ended up being his supper, especially when they asked him questions. Even though he was very wise, he hated being bugged. So she thought this would be the best way. Let him sleep, and in his sleep she would ask the questions. So that's what happened in this scene when she asks finally, what has happened to the farmer's daughter? Why is she so ill? And what is the cure for the farmer's daughter? Oh, daughter, oh, the daughter, as a young child, she was high-spirited and played many mean tricks on helpless critters. She now lies sick, riddled with guilt and shame. <coughs> One only has to whisper in her ear while she is asleep that she is greatly loved and forgiven, and she will be well again. <coughs> Who dares ask me questions? Who's here? It's only me. Thank you for uh, sharing your your dragon scene with us. Um, I think I'm going to put you back in your box before you do some damage to the set here. That was a real drag there. <laughs> Dragging him off of there. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's pretty cool. I like what you're doing so far. Tell us a little bit more about yourself there amongst all the dust. Oh, uh, more about myself. Well, I'm, um, I love performing with children. I love uh, working with children. Um, I still am a librarian, I guess, at heart. <laughs> I love telling stories to children. And my greatest pleasure is writing them, of course, and uh, I like to make them very um, entertaining. Uh, we did get a great recommendation from the library, uh, Timberland Library, for, the head librarian there, for, for our last show, because we had the children sitting on a, on a hard floor, a hard wood floor, for 45 minutes without them moving, and he was really impressed with that. Uh, we had a, and it was a 45 minute show, it was quite long. So uh, I guess I'm doing something right. <laughs> uh, would you like to meet Twirlwin, who, who is the author of this theater? Yes, I would, that sounds pretty cool. Ah, uh, Twirlwin, are you down here? Oh, yes, yes, thank you. Uh, come, on, come on up and meet everyone. They want to meet the brains behind this operation. There you go. Uh, hmm. Greetings, everyone. <laughs> I am Twirlwin the Great. Hmm. Uh, alchemist, wizard, magician, <laughs> uh, extraordinaire. <laughs> uh, I enjoy bringing my puppet theater to everyone who is willing and wanting to watch it. <laughs> uh, sometimes it's fun to watch the clowns, too. Uh, hmm. They remind me of many people I know. <laughs> hmm. Hi, Twirlwin. <laughs> ah, greetings to you too. 
Yes. So this is Twirlwind. Are you still here, Commander? Uh, yes, I am. Yes. Uh, mm. Twirlwind, I'd like to ask you a question. Yes. Where did you uh, get that funky hat? I like that hat. Where can I get one of those? Ah, you have to know a little bit of magic. <laughs> and then you have to go to wizard school. And then uh, this is part of uh, what you get. Do you know, sometimes a long time ago, they used to sit children in corner when they were uh, not so good in school. And they would put a hat similar to this on their head. I think it helped make them brains. Excellent. Excellent. Mm. Well, I must be on my way. I must prepare myself for another great show. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for having me come to, to, to see you, uh, and, and thank you. Oh, you're very welcome, Twirlwind, and uh, I'm anxious to perform again with you in our, in, our clown, in our clown shows. Oh, great. There you go. Thank you very much. Good job, good job. Yeah. So, um, I have some other shows, too. I didn't bring, unfortunately, I didn't bring any puppets uh, uh, with me as all I could bring along with me today. But there are some other shows that we've uh, also prepared. There's one called Dragons, Monsters, and Beasts. And uh, that's a story of, of finding um, courage. And uh, it's, again, another quest one where two, uh, be two little animals are trying to uh, uh, find this cave where there's great wealth, but it's guarded by something like dragons, or maybe monsters, or maybe beasts. And they discover in the, discover in the end that really the dragons or the monsters and the beasts were really inside of themselves, and they had to overcome their own fears in order to um, find the great treasure. Um, hmm, I have so many of them, I'm trying to remember all of them other that I have. Yeah, tell us another one. Hmm, let me think for a moment. There's one that we're going to be working on, uh, performing this, uh, this Christmas. Uh, would you like to hear about that one? Sure. Ah, it's, it's, it's a very simple short one, and it's about Santa Claus and um, how the reindeer uh, got the job of pulling his sleigh. Uh, it involves an elf, and it involves uh, the horses who first used to draw the sleigh, and then uh, all these, um, the elf goes and, and, and asks all the other animals that he or puts out ads all over the place asking for who could come and pull Santa's sleigh for Christmas. And they get elephants, they get even uh, rabbits, hor uh, not horses, but they got elephants. Uh, even a little mouse applies for the job. Unfortunately, none of them really could do the job. And finally, Santa discovers that there, there are a herd of deer living in a cave not far away from where his, his little house is. And um, they seem to fit the job. So that's how the deer got the, uh, got the uh, job of pulling Santa's sleigh. And that's our, our next little play that we're going to be working on next. Say, uh, that sounds really good. Uh, Twirlwind's Twilight Tales. Uh, so go ahead and go over your characters again and tell us more about yourself. OK, well, I have it in my puppets, I guess, close to 80 different puppets. In, the, uh, in my repertoire, in my studio. Uh, not all of them have performed yet. Some of them are all potential performers. Uh, I'm hoping to get them on stage soon. We've performed in uh, theaters. Uh, actually, we performed in one theater, the Drew Harvey Theater. Uh, many, uh, many performances there. We were doing them on Saturday mornings for the children. And um, we performed in some schools. Uh, I'm trying to think now of some of the other puppet shows that we have. Yeah. Yeah. Where, do you, where do you get your puppets? Do you make them yourself, or do you buy them, or do you have somebody make them for you? It's a combination of all of them. <laughs> some of them are bits and pieces that we put together and sew them together, and uh, from uh, some stuffed animals we, we, uh, we pick up, and uh, uh, some of them are uh, handmade. Some of them are also store-bought. Excellent. Uh, well, we've got uh, about four or five minutes there, three minutes. Sure. So uh, let's uh, go ahead and uh, see the puppets again. Let's see a couple of them. Would you like okay. to see a few of them again? Okay, this, this one here was, was handmade. This was a, a creation that I made for, for the son of Santa Claus. And actually, this, this puppet here, through the magic of, of the, uh, the wand that doesn't work really well for Hollyhock the fairy, she actually gets turned into a frog. And... Uh, Jingle still loves her son, nonetheless, and still becomes her friend. Uh, 
This one here was a makeup one. We took a, a stuffed animal that we dressed up and changed and added some props to him and uh, to be the Duke. And this is, the again, the puppet show where we have 13 puppets. All the cast are bunny rabbits, except for uh, the fairy, the queen, and the uh, king fairy, and, of course, Puck, the mischievous hobgoblin. All the rest are all rabbit characters. All of my puppets basically are animals, except for very few of them. What's your most favorite one? I like that dragon. He's pretty cool. <laughs> the dragon has been adapted, and... Uh, I also sewn things in, and we put the uh, tubes in, his, in, in him, where we have a little press ball with, that makes him blow out his, his smoke. And uh, he's bit, a combination of also being a, a store-bought one and a, and a made-up one. Bits and pieces, we added teeth to him. And, uh, so he's, he's not my favorite, though, but he is a good one. Children love him. And, uh, of course, Twirlwind's my favorite. Of course, he started the theater. And he's, he was started off as being a bot one, and we've changed his appearances as we went along. And, uh, of course, the scientist is, again, it's one that we picked up, and we put him a new dress on, and we created a, a character with, with some props with him and uh, wrote him into the story of an uh, apple pie tree. And McTavish Mouse was a gift that was given to me, and I've, I've used him in several different plays. Uh, but he fits the best in, in, um, in Midas. And he has a son that looks exactly the same as him, only a shorter version. Of course, you know what happens to the son in the story of Midas. Well, that's really neat. Uh, we're just about out of time here. Okay. About a minute or so, a little bit more over a minute. So uh, go ahead and tell the boys and girls and people at home, we've got one minute left. So, uh, you know, go ahead and, and uh, take us out of here, do your puppets and stuff, and uh, we'll... And, uh, Lay them all out on your desk there. And, oh, okay. And, uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, while he's doing that, I'll tell you about the next week's program coming up on Strumming Time Live. It's the Washboard Willie Show, uh, fourth annual Thanksgiving special. So, you want to be here for that, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks again very much for being here this evening. And, uh, Ron, you're doing a great, fine job. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much, and we'll have you back in real soon. Okay, well, thank you. I hope I'll be able to do a show for you. All right, well, keep on uh, talking there. That's okay. neat, ladies and gentlemen, all those puppets he has up there. Whoop. And here we go. Hey, uh, Commander, uh, would you like to end your show with a bang? Yes, I would. Ha. Huh. Got about five seconds there. Oh. You don't, you don't happen to have a light, do you? Kabang. Sorry, <laughs> we're gone. <laughs>